What do your students need to know about infrared light? Well, it's an electromagnetic wave, just like regular light, except that the wavelength is longer. And it's invisible to the human eye, but not to snakes. When we say that snakes see infrared light, we only mean that they are sensitive to it. The pits on the face cannot actually focus the light, and so that it's mostly just used for triangulation. The ability to sense the heat of an animal seems to have evolved independently in pythons and pit vipers, including the rattlesnake. You can experience a similar sensation to a snake's heat vision by gently closing your eyes and pointing a flashlight at your face. The light is bright enough for you to triangulate its position by turning your head, and when both eyes see the same thing, you'll know that the light is right in front of you. That's what it's like for the snake. They do not actually see their prey, they only sense it. This glass prism can separate the sun's light by its color, or wavelength, and this is how infrared light was first discovered. Astronomer William Herschel projected the solar spectrum onto black painted thermometers to find out which color was the warmest. He was using mercury thermometers. You can imagine his surprise when the warmest color turned out to be an invisible color that he didn't even know about, beyond the red side of the spectrum. Now he recognized immediately that this was a new form of invisible light, which he called calorific rays. You can repeat Herschel's experiment exactly as he did it, but you might prefer to use one of these a temperature-sensitive liquid crystal sheet. When it gets warm, it changes color. So, which color is the warmest? Once again, it's the invisible calorific rays, which these days we now call infrared, meaning lower than red. Point your TV remote control at a camera, and you can clearly see it flickering as you press the button. That's infrared light. The camera misreads it as a purple. Near-infrared is used in TV remote controls and military lasers. Intermediate infrared guides heat-seeking missiles because really hot machines glow brightest in this color. And then there's far-infrared, which has the longest wavelengths. Far infrared is the type of light seen by thermographic cameras, and it's given off by objects just warmer than room temperature, like you. Many substances that are transparent to visible light are opaque in the infrared, and vice versa. For example, this glass jar blocks the far infrared light so you don't know what's behind it. On the other hand, this black plastic bag is perfectly transparent in the infrared so you can see right through. This is ice in warm water. Now, hot water. Aw, look at this adorable mouse. It wants to hide in this bag. But what it doesn't know is that I have a thermographic camera. Far infrared light is often used to find hidden objects that have a heat signature. It even works in the dark. Here I am comparing the light from the TV remote control to a candle. When we look through the diffraction grating, we see that the candle's light is diffracted into a full rainbow, but the remote control's light only shows a narrow dot. This proves that the infrared light is longer in wavelength than the red light because it's diffracted much further. I estimate that the wavelength is about 900 nanometers, which is very nearly the same wavelength as visible light. Not only can you see the infrared light with a camera, but you can hear it with a silicon solar cell connected to a set of computer speakers. You can also see it on an oscilloscope. 
It's kind of like Morse code. This is the number one. Here's another trick you can try. Get a night light and dim the room so that it's barely turning on and off. Now with your TV remote control, you can make it flicker. You can reflect the signal from your remote control too. Point it at a white piece of paper and you can turn your TV on and off. But if you instead point it at a black piece of paper, it doesn't work. So what is the most important application of infrared light? Well, how about this one? Asteroids are very dark, almost invisible against the background of space, but they are relatively bright in the infrared. Using space-based telescopes that can see infrared light, we might be able to see the asteroids before they cross the Earth's path and cause extinction-level events. That might be useful.